Right now on Hoosier News Source, remembering an Indiana legend, tributes continue to come in for longtime IU basketball coach Bob Knight. A new IU study uncovers what neighborhood police spend the most time patrolling. We break down the findings. And a car drives through a building on the city limits. We have the latest on what fire officials are saying. Remembering an icon, Indiana and basketball fans remember the man who put IU basketball on the map. Hello and welcome to Hoosier News Source. I'm Carson Johnson. And I'm Sydney Moore. It has been a week since Bob Knight passed away at the age of 83. His family says he passed peacefully surrounded by loved ones. Our Grace Morocco takes a look back at his life and legacy. My time on earth is gone and my activities here are past. I want they bury me upside down and my critics can kiss my He is without question the most loyal person toward me of any individual I, I know. For nearly three decades, Assembly Hall heard this. You're crazy! The goddamn ball is that far off the bucket! Passionate and sometimes even controversial. Screams from Indiana coach Bob Knight. But on Friday night, you could hear a pin drop. Please honor this IU legend with a moment of silence. A moment of silence held in Coach Knight's honor. Hit me like a ton of bricks. It really did. Former Assembly Hall PA announcer Chuck Crabb was there to witness all 29 years of Coach Knight. He calls Knight a friend. He was an unbelievable historian. That always amazed me. Uh, he had a great love of history. History is something restaurant owner Cheryl Ferguson knows all too well. Oh, let me show you. This. That's Coach Knight with a basketball in his lap driving it. Knight was a regular at our Sandwich Place. He even had his own chair, where he would sit with friends and family. Coach was a man who was able to, to get his sense of purpose across to people. Stories fill the four walls. And I said, Coach, last time you were here, you left your hat. And I pointed it out to him. I said, do you want it back? And he looked at the hat, and he looked at me, and he looked back at the hat, and he looked at me, and he said, hell no. <laughs> back at Assembly Hall, a memorial continues with flowers, letters, and, of course, a chair. For Hoosier News Source, I'm Grace Morocco. Knight's family requests that any donations in his honor be made to the Alzheimer's Association or to Marion University, where Knight had a strong tie to the coaching team. A Bloomington man was arrested on a murder charge after police reportedly found a dead person inside of a home early Saturday morning. Bryce Layton was booked into the jail after an investigation. Court documents say police responded to a home along State Road 45 around 1.30 Saturday morning for a disturbance. When police arrived, they found a woman dead in the garage with a gunshot wound to the head. She was identified as 48-year-old Tara Langley. Court documents allege the couple was in an argument and that Layton claimed he shot the woman in self-defense. We have an update for you on last month's armed robbery on campus. IUPD announced an arrest has been made after an investigation. 18-year-old Jack Hobbs IV of Morgan County was arrested by the Johnson County Sheriff's Office. We're told that a joint investigation by IUPD and the Monroe County High Tech Crime Unit led police to Hobbs. He faces charges of armed robbery, battery by means of a deadly weapon, and intimidation. He is set to be back in court on December 6th. A crash early Monday morning sent one person to the hospital. Officials with the Monroe Fire Protection District say the accident happened at the intersection of Eller Road and State Road 45. First responders found two cars with front damage, and one of the cars was in a ditch. This is the same intersection where a woman was killed in September after a head-on crash. And take a look at this. Around the same time as that crash Monday, crews also responded to a call of a car driving into a building. This was in the area of Gifford Road around 6 Monday morning. The driver was pulled from the vehicle. Luckily, no one was injured. New research from several universities, including IU, reveals a trend in the neighborhoods that police patrol. Our Brooklyn Lambright talked with the assistant professor who helped with the study and breaks down the findings. 
New research from Indiana University has found that police officers spend more time patrolling non-white neighborhoods. Using anonymized smartphone data, researchers studied 10,000 police officers in 21 different cities. The assistant professor of marketing at the IU Kelly School of Business, Kate Christensen, was a part of the team that studied police patrol. For me, it just started out with a question during the pandemic, which is, What's happening? Where are people going? And I use the tools that I've learned as, as a business school researcher to try and address that problem with a lot of different teams. Researchers used anonymous phone data to pinpoint where police officers travel during patrol. Their findings, however, do not explain why police officers spend more time patrolling non-white neighborhoods. Our data is correlational, so we, don't, we can't tell you the answers. All we can say is that there is this pattern. We can't say that it's because of over-policing or under-policing. All we can say is that we find this difference, and it seems interesting to look at this difference, and further research can examine why this might be. Combining the data from six major cities across the U.S., researchers found that more time spent in Black neighborhoods correlated to higher arrest rates for Black residents. For every 1% increase in Black residents in an area, we found 0.36% increase in time spent in that area. And this could explain statistically more than half of the higher arrest rate of black people in, our, in the cities for which we had this data. Christensen is not sure what the impact of the data findings will be, but she is hopeful the data will help the public understand what happens before police make an arrest. There is still a lot to this study that may catch your attention. We have a more in-depth look at the research. Just log on to IUSTV.com and click on this story. Indiana Governor Eric Holcomb has appointed the newest member of the IU Board of Trustees. IU South Bend alum Isaac Torres will replace retired trustee Michael Miro. Torres earned his Master of Business Administration at IU South Bend in 1999. He is the founder of Intercambio Express, a business that aims to send money internationally safer. Torres will be sworn into his membership tomorrow afternoon at the IU Board of Trustees meeting in Indianapolis. Country singer Kane Brown is heading to Bloomington this spring. His concert series, The Full Ride Tour, will take place at IU's auditorium this April. His performance at IU is one of many schools the singer is traveling to and part of the tour series dedicated to raising money for each college's charity of choice. IU's proceedings will go towards the charity Students Helping Students, a student-run nonprofit focused on helping those across campus. Tickets for the show will go on sale for Crimson Card holders this Friday. Still ahead, another election has wrapped up. We have the results from some of our local races. And the weather has been absolutely gorgeous as of late, but will it stick around? Quinton is in with a check of the forecast when we come back. Hoosier Sports Night, your source for Hoosier Athletics. Last night was an uneventful election night in Monroe County. Only one race for District 3 was contested. On the ballot this year were three large seats and District 1, 2, 4, 5, and 6 on the Bloomington City Council. Here's the latest on the new leadership in the area. Carrie Thompson is Bloomington's new mayor after winning the Democratic nomination back in May. There was no Republican candidate. Thompson takes over for John Hamilton, who has been Bloomington's mayor since 2016. Thompson was the CEO for Habitat for Humanity of Monroe County for more than 20 years. In 2018, she was appointed Executive Director of IU Center for Rural Engagement. According to her website, she is an avid cyclist, which is perfect for what feels like the bike capital of the country, and lives and lives in Elm Heights neighborhood with her husband and five children. Nicole Bolden is keeping her seat as Bloomington's county clerk. In 2015, Bolden became the first African-American woman elected to a citywide office and the only LGBTQ woman of color to hold office statewide. She is very active in the community and currently serves on the board of directors of Community Kitchen and the Community Advisory Board for WTIU. She is also co-founder of the Monroe County Black Democratic Caucus. 
The only contested Monroe County race was in District 3. The district encompasses IU's campus north of 10th Street and Griffey Lake. Also in the district are the neighborhoods between College Avenue and Memorial Stadium and the neighborhoods between 10th Street and 3rd Street, from South Union to about Park Ridge Road. Democrat Hopi Stosberg won the contested District 3 race. Stosberg is a longtime volunteer and has been involved with parent-teacher organizations at the University Elementary School. She has served as president and vice president for a combined five years. An MCCSC referendum was on the ballot again this year. Last year, Monroe County School Corporation passed their referendum again, but to increase the price to 18.5 cents per $100 of assessed property value. Referenda are committed to covering costs like teacher and staff salaries, benefits, and academic programs. This year, MCCSC asked voters to approve another referendum. This year's referendum, which covered early learning programs, passed. The referendum will completely cover early learning programs for families at the 200% poverty level with a three or four year old child. For families at the 300% level, 75% of the costs would be covered. Families at the 200% level have an annual income of $60,000 according to the 2023 Federal Poverty Guidelines. Turning to weather now, we have been blessed with some unseasonal warmth. Quentin Condra is in with this week's forecast. Quentin? Hi guys, we've got some unseasonably high temperatures in Indiana today with 76 here in uh, Bloomington. With up in Indianapolis, we've got 74 to 75. And then from Bedford South, we've got temperatures ranging from 77 to 78 degrees. For our day planner, at nine o'clock today, we're gonna start with some partly cloudy skies with temperatures around 60 degrees. And then around 12 o'clock, we'll see those clouds start to clear out with temperatures around 73. Then around three o'clock, those clouds disappear with our temperature around 76. For the rest of our week, we've got nothing but sun. Uh, this weekend, we've got temperatures around 33, 32 degrees around the freezing mark, but that shouldn't be too big of a worry because I don't think it'll pass that threshold where we'd worry about a freeze warning or anything like that. But besides that, it's just sun the rest of the week. Guys? Quentin, thanks, and thank you for watching this week's Who's Your News Source. As always, be sure to follow us on social media and check us out on IUSTV, IUSTV.com to stay up to date on all the latest news, weather, and sports. Have a great rest of the week, and we'll see you back here next week.